Kirk, let's move to a story that's been brewing for months. Major League Soccer is reportedly still looking for a way out, either partially or entirely, from the U.S. Open Cup, first reported by Michael Batista over at HudsonRiverBlue.com, who reported that U.S. soccer is being, quote, held hostage by MLS, and that as of Friday, MLS teams would not be participating in the tournament. Tournament, excuse me. Uh, our Jeff Carlisle reporting today that Arthur Matson, who's the chairman of U.S. Soccer's Open Cup committee, has resigned after he said he was asked to stand down by higher-ups, claiming that the tournament is in grave danger. We have some late-breaking news tonight. U.S. Soccer uh, will apparently be having a tournament in 2024. We don't know the format, and we don't know who will participate, but there definitely will be, Herc, an Open Cup this year. At least that's what we're being told. A penny for your thoughts on the latest in this saga. Where do we, where do we start? Um, this very show told the audience right before the New Year, I believe it was the 19th, 18th, 20th of December, about this. We did a whole segment about it. Seb, you had a very good rant where you actually <laughs> asked the U.S. Soccer Federation to strip Major League Soccer of their D1 status. And many people scoffed. Many people were like, Sebi, where was the outrage when Copa Mekis was abolished and this happened, which are not apples to oranges. That's a first division, second division tournament that was closed off to amateur, to third divisions, to et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it wasn't against their bylaws or, or their rules. So... Uh, Many people scoffed, and here we are, and many people are, are actually wondering if that could happen. And the mm. reason probably MLS doesn't just say the hell with it is because that can happen. I think it's unfortunate. I think what we're seeing here is a money struggle, and it coincides with Messi. Messi is the death of the U.S. Open Cup, and it's a shame that they're using a player like Messi, his likeness, mm. And everything goes with it as a bargaining chip. What essentially happens here is Messi comes to League Cup, League's Cup, it's more valuable. Messi comes to MLS, it's more valuable. What's the one thing that Major League Soccer didn't have control of when it came to marketing Messi? That was the U.S. Open Cup when mm -hmm. they played Cincinnati. You remember that? And when they played mm -hmm. Houston. That's on the U.S. Soccer Federation. So they go off and they sell those TV, right, TV rights. They go off and they do the marketing for this. They don't want to grow the game in the right way. They want to grow the game in their way. And what I mean by that is Don Garber, who is a shield for the owners, he's not the all evil one. He's a shield for the owners. He's Roger Goodell. Okay? He's a shield for the owners. He's, he is their Bocero, their mouthpiece for the owners. He doesn't make up these rules as he goes. It's the owners. He said, what has happened over time is the tournament has not been resonated enough with fans and commercial partners and sponsors and certainly media partners in the way to justify the level of participation to be acquired from us in the past. Why are they holding or how are they holding U.S. soccer or the Lamar Hunt U.S. Uh, Open hostage is saying we won't participate with our teams or our player, Messi, unless we get, what, more concessions. And we've heard reports of the split they wanted, the 60-40 split they wanted for having Major League Soccer teams go to these lower plazas, these USL sides, and play a game there. They wanted more of the gate. They wanted more of the split. It's all about money. So it saddens me that with little history that U.S. soccer actually has, with the little history that they have, a tournament that has rich history over 100 years, and their final... Their final is the equivalent, if not more, financially of MLS Cup. And winning that final gets you the exact same thing as MLS Cup, which would be the CONCACAF Champions Cup and potential Club World Cup. But in seven games, instead of a whole season, they, they would cheapen it this way and force the most diehard of fans to say, God, I have to rethink this. So now, today, MLS is turning away its own fans, it's in a fight with its own referees, and it's in a fight right now with the media for a tournament that they could easily say, do what you want with. Mm. Play who you want, whether it be the reserve players, et cetera, et cetera, but participate because that's what you should do. That's what you have to do. 
I want to address something you mentioned off the top, my uh, discussion about Division I sanctioning, right, and what U.S. soccer can and cannot do with that. Uh, here's the reality. I don't know why MLS is at the bargaining table here, if not for their fear over what the U.S. Soccer Federation could do because MLS is breaking a rule here, right? MLS clearly hurt, to your point, seems to want out of this tournament. And so I don't think U.S. soccer is dangling that out there. I don't think anybody in American soccer wants to see MLS lose its Division I sanction. I mean, we would spend the next decade in the courtrooms. It would be horrible for American soccer. But it's the only thing that U.S. soccer can kind of at this point hold on to and say, well, wait a second, MLS. You can't just walk out on this tournament. Um, so I think, Kirk, when people see something like this pop up, they expect for us to break out the flamethrowers here on Football Americas, right? Because one, it's kind of what we do. And two, we're really the only people in this space that will do that, right? That seem to have a flamethrower in our bag. Um, I'm not going to break the flamethrower out here, which is, I know, against my MO, because I don't think it's the moment. We're at a crossroads. But I think you break out the flamethrower, Herc, once the wrong has been committed. And you can look back and you say, this was this person's fault, this was that person's fault, and we need to blame and name them. The wrong has not been committed yet, right? We're still in a negotiation here. So instead of breaking out the flamethrower, I think we should pick up two other tools. One is a magnifying glass, and the other is an olive branch. Now, the olive branch I'll leave for later, because I don't really know how to use it, but I'll try and figure it out in the next couple <laughs> minutes. The magnifying glass here, Herc, is important, because we need to know what's happening, how it's happening, and who at the end of the day is going to make this decision, right? So we've heard a lot about the U.S., Open Cup Committee. And I mentioned the name Arthur Matson, who just resigned. That U.S. Open Cup Committee is not who is making this decision. Now, it's a fair question that we ask why they're not making this decision and why the chairman of that decided to step down after he was, according to him, what he told our Jeff Carlisle, feeling pressure from above to step away from this process. Okay? So, we need to understand then, if it's not the Open Cup Committee, Herc, who really is in charge? And what we found out, what I found out today, is it's a subcommittee, a subcommittee named by the board of directors. Now, publicly, we don't really know who the names are on this subcommittee, which is dangerous, right? But we do know that there's some key players in the federation who are definitely involved in this, okay? The CEO, J.T. Batson, and the president, Cindy Parlo Cohn. So this is the magnifying glass on those two people in particular. We know that you have it within your power to say no to MLS, to say to MLS, you must entirely participate in the Open Cup. And that is what you should do. You should not acquiesce to Major League Soccer, even though you promised everybody an Open Cup, to say to MLS, we'll proceed with the Open Cup, but on your terms would be a grave, grave mistake from U.S. soccer. Because if you think that letting MLS put one foot out of this tournament is going to lead to, in a year or two, them putting two feet back in, I got something to tell you. It's not going to happen. Letting MLS take one step out is effectively saying to MLS, we'll see you later. The other part of this olive branch, Herc, and I would never, ever, ever pick up this olive branch and extend it as I am, if I wasn't so desperate, Herc, because you know me, I love the Open Cup. I think it has an incredible value to American soccer and incredible potential for this sport to bring everybody together. I get it, MLS. I totally understand. If I was in business, I would want to spend the time that my business is open for business, maximizing my profit as best I saw fit. But guess what? This is not just about business. For the people at MLS, it may be. But if you want to be part of a functioning soccer ecosystem in this country, guess what? You got to play along with others, whether those others are above you. And right now, the people above you in the United States, there's only one thing, and that's Liga Mekis. Liga Mekis is above you in ratings, so you want to go play against them and get their ratings. But guess what, Major League Soccer? There are people down the ladder as well. And those teams deserve to be able to compete in an Open Cup competition where the so-called First Division is entered. Because if you let the First Division walk, you kill the Open Cup, Herc. So we've shed some light on it, OK? But we've not burned this thing to the ground. MLS, the ball is still in your court. There are 48 hours left. Maybe, no, there's, there's probably what? Five days left in this week, because we got to have answers soon. MLS can still do the right thing, Herc.
it's still within their power. 